Welcome to the Additive Report Advisor, a webcast series for machine shops and fabrication shops that provides insight on additive manufacturing. Our guest today is Roland Spiegelhalder, who's product manager with Trump. Now, the goal of this webcast series and of this episode is to help job shops connect the dots. And what I mean by that is providing information to get to what's real, what do you need to know, and what do you need to do. Now, I'm Todd Grimm, I'm your host, and I'm going to be using my 30 years of experience in additive manufacturing to make sure we do stay on point, that we stay real, that we stay informative, and don't venture into infomercials. Our sponsor for this episode is Trump. Now, Trump is an organization that has over 20 years of experience in additive manufacturing. It's actually a pioneer in metal additive manufacturing. And its goal or its approach is to provide industrial solutions to the AM world to help bring 3D printing into series production. Now, it does that through two distinct process lines. It offers laser metal deposition, or LMD for short, and that's through its true laser line, and also laser metal fusion, or LMF, and that's through its true print line. Now, on the LMD, or laser metal deposition product line, it does have the hybrid option, which means on one platform, you can do additive work and also do operations like machining and welding. Now, Roland is employed by Trump. He is the product manager, of, as I've already said, and with that, it's his obligation to provide solutions to job shops in both categories, laser metal deposition and laser metal fusion. And that's how I want to approach the conversation, serving you, the job shop, through solutions in metal additive manufacturing that Trump offers. Now, he got his start in college and really in a big way, so over eight years experience with his master's thesis work in collaboration with Porsche. From there, he went on to become a development engineer with Porsche and then transitioned to Trump, where he's a process development engineer. And in that capacity, Roland secured a patent for additive manufacturing scanning simulation, or strategies, I should say. And he also has several other patents pending. So with that introduction, Roland, welcome to the Additive Report Advisor. Thank you, Todd. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Well, let's, let's see if you'll be happy after I ask you tough right. questions, okay? <laughs> so, Roland, what I want to do is start with uh, a technology bucket of questions. Since Trump has both classes, both process types of additive manufacturing, I think it's ideal to offer our listeners a understanding of what differentiates laser metal fusion from laser metal deposition. So if you can give us an idea of where they fit, where the crossover is, where the gray areas are in the context of what a job shop would need to know. Would you mind tackling that for us? All right, yeah, no, let's go. Um, I think, yeah, it's, it's uh, a very good question. Uh, obviously one that also we hear uh, quite a lot. Um, both are additive manufacturing technologies, as you said, the LMD as well as the LMF. Uh, both are using laser as a power source, and uh, at the end, uh, you get a 3D printed part uh, out of metal. Um, uh, now, where's the difference? Um, the difference is, if you go into details, uh, yeah, quite large. So the um, laser metal deposition is more technology that you can use with very big parts. So you can uh, really scale up to multiple feeds in sizes, and uh, you would rather use that technology for fairly easier shapes and geometries uh, compared to um, the powder bed um, technology, the LMF, where you would more focus on smaller parts on very high complexity um, and geometry. And um, obviously for the, the laser metal deposition, um, you are also um, working more Sometimes you already have a structure and you only want to add complexity in a certain area or you want to reinforce it somewhere or you want to, for example, just add another material on top of something. So this is where the LMD comes in. And um, then, as I said, for smaller, more complex parts, um, you would go to the LMF now. Okay. Well, so to clarify what you're saying is I can have an existing component and I can add features to that component. So I could have it turned, I could have it cast, I could have it forged and then turn around and add bosses or ports or whatever you have sticking off of the sides. Now you can also use it as my understanding as repair. So let's say a gas turbine application, the burner is eroded, 
you could machine that away and then use LMD to add that geometry back in. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. So you could think of uh, the LMD machine as a, a milling machine, but instead of removing material, you can add material. So exactly uh, what you're saying is totally right. You can use it for the repair um, in a much more flexible way uh, than you can do it with the LMF, where it's also possible, but in a uh, much more um, yeah, limited way. Uh, it's you know, from my understanding or my experience, a heavily customized machine to get to the machining operation and adding um, material back in. Now, I want to ask you, so you said large and scalable for LMD yeah. and then small and more complex for LMF. How, how large is large? How small is small? What, what kind of break-even yeah. point in inches or millimeters, feet or meters? Mm -hmm. All right. So it's obviously always hard to put all the application in uh, one pot. Um, so it's definitely a range. Um, and for example, if we look at our biggest uh, LMD system, we can support, um, for example, X travel axis um, up to four meters. Um, so it's really then quite some extremely large parts. Um, most of the times uh, the parts are not uh, that big. Maybe they are only... Uh, yeah, two meters uh, or things like that um, compared to the LMF, uh, the powder bed technology, where you would be uh, definitely below half a meter or below two feet in, in all geometries. Okay. Well, with this, it, my, my thought would be, based on your description, is if you go into the average or typical job shop, mm -hmm. you're more likely to see an interest or actually implementation of LMF, metal fusion. So the powder bed process is, is that true yes i would say, i think uh definitely the powder beds the lmf technology uh gets much a much bigger push right now so uh, the cladding or the lmd technology is there for uh, quite a long time um it also definitely um works uh and accelerated by the same hype wave uh, that we see with, with the AM in general. Uh, but nevertheless, um, I think the LMF gives us now more potential here. Um, definitely both are growing, uh, but uh, the, the LMF side of it, I think is the one where the chop shops can, can benefit more because it's now um, so much more opportunities out there. And I think uh, the demand is definitely increasing quite a while. So um, LMDS and definitely LMF too. Okay. Well, with this, so oh, I oh, one other area I want to clarify. So I mentioned in the Trump um, promo piece that you offer hybrid platforms. Can you explain what that is, and really importantly, yep. why should a job shop care about hybrid? Yeah. Um, uh, so our LMD technology, um, uh, we are selling it or we having having it in both ways. Uh, we, on the one hand, obviously we are a laser manufacturer, so we can supply all the parts needed for an integration, but obviously we have very um, advanced machines uh, which are already um, designed to do laser welding tasks, to do laser cutting tasks. So uh, these hybrid machines uh, then can be also um, configured with the LMD hat. So you pretty much would have one machine, you can use it, and every chop shop, a lot of chop shops have these machines. Uh, they use it for just laser, uh, laser cutting uh, parts or laser welding parts. And you then also can add uh, that LMD technology to it to utilize it also in that way. And I think it definitely adds the value. You don't need more space for it. You might already have a machine and only need to update it. So I think it definitely uh, gives you a lot of benefits to um, work there in, in that hybrid way. Well, I just have thought, you know, I usually think of a hybrid platform as add material through an additive process, then suspend that, then come back in and do a secondary operation to tweak to spec. So you don't have to do a secondary machining operation after the 3D print's done. But I was just thinking, what if you had a 2D or 2.5D uh, laser cutting run? So I've yep. got a flat profile and I've got a few features sticking up vertically and I use the the, the additive component of hybrid yeah. to add those features on. Is that a possibility also? Yeah, no, definitely. That definitely would, would work. Um, also, I think, um, for example, fixtures are also an important part. Sometimes you have already the part in the machine and maybe you need it quite a while to really set it up in the right way. If it's already in there, you can use the same access reference. You can just go ahead, change the nozzle head and uh, yeah, there you go. Okay. So 
Sounds good. Well, so we get, get that covered. So an understanding of LMF and LMD. Now with both of those in the same question, the same bucket, what does someone need to know as they're taking or soon to be taking the delivery of their first machine? And the angle on this question I have is what should they know that's different than if they add a non-additive manufacturing process to their lineup? So I'm all about CNC milling and I turn around yeah. and I get a 2D laser cutter or a water jet. Is there anything different in additive manufacturing that creates a, a void that most people step into and say, oh my God, I wish I knew that before I ventured on the journey? Yeah, so um, uh, I think definitely um, it's it's a new technology. Um, uh, I think everybody needs to understand uh, if you would think of AM similar as just I add a technology like machining or, or casting to, to my company, it's definitely something new. Um, machining is around for um, I don't know how many decades. Uh, we have lots of experience. Casting is around for over a thousand years. So um, I think the AM is definitely something new. Um, a lot of our books, um, if, if we are going to university, if we are talking to engineers, they already, they, they are very familiar with machining. They are very familiar with casting. Um, that does not apply that much for the AM. Um, so a lot of the, the general things that need to be, um, yeah, keep in mind working with that technology um, are not, for everybody available. So it's definitely a new technology with, with a lot of challenges. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, the, the, the thing that, that uh, you could do wrong would be just thinking, okay, I add that machine like another milling machine to my chop shop. So it's definitely something new. You need to be open-minded. You need to uh, be, be okay with, with going into different procedures. And uh, I think then, uh, it will, it will, it will definitely work. I think the technology is now also quite around for a long time. Uh, I think we see more and more uh, successful parts there. Uh, I think we can go later into that. Uh, but yeah, that would be my recommendation. Okay. Don't go too fast. Um, and um, well, I'm also hearing you say that you know it's something new. You you got a whole new set of yeah. learnings to to master. Uh, Am I hearing you say it takes time to be effective? So it's not buy the machine, plug it in, qualify it, and tomorrow you're running good parts. Instead, plan on yeah. a, a bit of a journey. Is that true? Yes, I would definitely say it's a journey. This is why I also think um, the sooner you get in, uh, the easier it is, um, because now the technology is still new. There are not too many companies out there who have really the pretty much, who are like, uh, yeah, the the main suppliers there. I think there's definitely room there for, for others to get in. And I think if you do now the learning, um, you're prepared for the future. Um, and I think definitely it's, it's uh, as of right now, not too late to get it, go in there, um, as I said, and uh, then you can really grow uh, together with the technology and uh, yeah, then step up that way. Sounds good. Any other top of mind recommendations for a shop looking at their first additive machine? Do's and don't do's? Yeah, so um, uh, I think good thing is, as, as we said before, maybe start not with the biggest machines. Um, you have a lot of invest with a big machine, not only the machine, it's very, ex uh, or can be quite expensive. It's also just the powder that you need to run for such a system. So I would say start with a smaller machine, uh, really get to know to the technology. And I think then it's really easy to scale up from there. The big difference is uh, if you are maybe learning on a small build shop where you have uh, thousands of dollars of powder in there, then uh, yeah, that's totally okay. If you are suddenly have in there hundreds of thousands of dollars and uh, um, yeah, you're not successful with your build shop, uh, the impact could be quite different. So um, yes, take the smaller machines, uh, learn with it. I think um, we have yeah, we've established now quite some nice tools um, for chop shops and, and people on, from the industry out there to really learn it. Um, you will see, yeah, a lot of trainings uh, which are available. Um, so, oh, definitely that all these things are, are things that makes you easier to, to get in there. And now that we've covered technology, at least the baseline, so people have an understanding, I wanna shift into applications and drivers and benefits. 